r slash ask reddit chefs of reddit what are some cooking tips everyone should know oven mitts can in fact catch on fire also if you have wet hands or get the oven mitt wet they don't work lol a good kitchen should be equipped with a plentiful supply of clean dry towels sharp knives are less dangerous than dull knives i hate dull knives sharp knives require almost zero force just a cutting motion and the knife does all the work as ramsey says let the knife do the work learn basic cutting techniques for cutting vegetables keep it simple the number ingredients doesn't say anything about the taste of a dish go for dishes you can make in 30 to 40 minutes with six to eight ingredients keep a notebook gather a list recipes and dishes you do regularly expand gradually with new stuff don't just buy cookbooks you never really use adding is easy removing is hard people here argue to liberally add butter and seasoning tastes differ though it's totally fine to put in less if that's what you fancy you don't need a gazillion utensils in your daily cooking a basic kitchen knife already does a lot of the heavy lifting learn to use that properly observe how do ingredients act when you combine them what happens when you put them in a pan or pot and apply heat? Always be cleaning. You have idle time? Clean the sink. Don't be afraid to fail. Learn from your mistakes. Also, don't pretend you know better than the recipe. Especially if you never made a recipe before. Always be cleaning is important to end of meal satisfaction. It's such a drag to look up at the end of a great dinner and see a monstrous cleaning task ahead of you. Two things for beginners. First, taste as you cook, at various stages of cooking. While safe, not raw meat, taste your food as you cook it. This lets you know if you have too much of something or too little. It also helps you develop your palate for what different seasonings do. Second, if you're just starting out and don't know which spices to buy, pick a specific cuisine you like. Are you a fan of Italian food? Focus only on Italian recipes for a while. Most use similar herbs and spices because the cuisine of the area used what they had available to them. This will let you learn several recipes without having to buy massive amounts of spices to make it work. Eventually you will build up a good stock and be set to handle most things. A falling knife has no handle. The worst cut I've ever had was from trying catch one on reflex. I got sliced across all my fingers. Great tip to internalize. I'm terrified because my natural instinct when I drop things is to break their fall with my foot. Which has saved plates from breaking, sodas from exploding, phone screens from cracking, etc. Knives will keep right on stabbing, though. 3 or 4 times the amount of butter and salt is a big part of why your food doesn't taste like restaurant food. How about 4 to 5 times the garlic? Still not enough. Your pan does not need to be on maximum heat. You have to cook meat to a specific internal temperature to kill bacteria. Anything more is just trying it out. Generalized. Lemon zest and garlic with a cream sauce makes anything delicious. Wash your hands, tools, and area after dealing with raw meats. Watch the water splatter from the sink when washing as well. When a recipe calls for you to let something sit or rest. Do not rush this step. Good things happen to the food in that time. You are less likely to cut yourself with a sharp knife, compared to a dull one. Sifting flour, when adding it to baking recipes, can improve the results. Test your yeast before committing to using it. When cooking for a group, season lightly, and use hot spices sparingly. They can both be done after it's served. Puree or fine great veggies such as carrots or zucchini into sauces, or even peanut butter, to get kids to get some nutrients. Buy a rice cooker, Uncle Roger said so. Sanitize, sanitize, sanitize. Wet and dry hand while breeding or coating food. Never pry anything out of an electrical appliance. No metal in toasters or microwaves. Dishwashers have a gunk trap or general area where stuff collects. Clean this. Also check the water outlets as lemon seeds and other things can clog them. Herbs and spices can be annoying to eat such as twiggy pieces of rosemary or peppercorns. Put them in a cheesecloth, or emptied out tea bag, wrapped in the liquid, to give their flavors but not the textures. Don't pan fry bacon in the morning with no shirt on. Buy local as often as you can. 
Sorry if this is a stupid question but how do you test yeast? Add to warm water with a pinch of sugar and see if it blooms becomes frothy. That's how you know it's alive. Tongs are also oven mitts, juices, knives, spoons, and extendo arms. Just make sure you click them at least twice before using them to make sure they are on. If you're getting annoyed because it's taking you too long to peel garlic, place an unpeeled garlic clove under the flat side of your kitchen knife and press on it with your hand. The garlic peel will separate easily and your garlic will be crushed. This is the way. Wear a tall hat to hide the small rat. Mise in place, everything in its place. Have everything cut, seasonings and ingredients measured before you start cooking. This way you can focus on cooking. Brown meats in small batches. Do not overcrowd the pan. It will cause me to sweat and will not brown properly. I love to cook. My now husband hated it when we started. Mise in place was the game changer for him. He said he felt so much pressure and had to focus on one thing at a time. Follow the instructions then move on to the next. It was clearly immensely stressful for him, and staying on task meant not only huge delays to prep for the next part of cooking, but without a line in the recipe saying, taste it, he never did. We've done home chef for years now, initially to expand my cooking repertoire, then to help in a concise and instructional way, and now because having groceries delivered during a pandemic is useful and safe. He shoes me out of the kitchen now when it's his turn to cook, and is still my sous chef as needed. Really amazing to see someone enjoy what they once loathed, and I am so happy he's got another arena in life in which to feel confident. Whatever you do do not put your coconut in the microwave. I need to know the story behind this. If you find cooking unbearable, try being less sober while you do it. I enjoy cooking with wine. Sometimes, I even put it in the food. Avid home cook. The spice measurements in most online recipes are way too small. I usually double them. Cinnamon isn't just for sweet foods. It can be really really good in savory foods. Don't forget the acid. A bit of citrus juice or vinegar can really make a dish pop and bring out the other flavors. Don't be afraid to deviate from a recipe. But be careful with baked goods. If you make big changes in baked goods you might get a dud unless you know how it will affect the baking process. Cooking is an art. Baking is a science. Sauce. 20 years in the restaurant industry. For thick and nice sauces, use the water you cook your pasta with. Was looking for this. I learned it helps the sauce stick to the pasta better. 2. I always save a bit of the pasta water to add to my sauce even if it's just marinara. Salt and pepper are your best friends. Spog for almost everything. Salt, pepper, onion, garlic. When cooking at home, especially for guests and especially in winter, microwave the plates bowls for 30-90 seconds before putting the food on them. Cold plates take heat from food. Hot plates keep food hot longer. NB. Check your crockery is microwave proof first and obviously don't do it for food that's supposed to be cold like salads or ice cream. I am not a chef but I know for a fact that you shouldn't cook something you aren't familiar with if you are having guests. While that is a very true statement, I almost always cook the best shit I've never tried for friends family. I think it's kind of a nervous thing and I'm much more attentive at the ingredients. Oh and about your username. Thank you very much. Been while since anyone has said that. Butter is the god of ingredients and bringing flavors forward. Garlic too. Don't put out a grease fire with water. A microwave is your friend. Sharpen home your knives. Clean up as you cook clean as you go. Why can't my kids grasp this concept? Kosher salt, cracked black pepper, olive oil, garlic, lemon, butter, that's all you need to season anything. Any protein, any roasted veggie, any salad keep it simple. Also, a working meat thermometer will never let you down. Take the guesswork out. Briner dang birds, like salt, sugar and water makes a basic brine. Let it sit in there overnight. Juicy bird guaranteed. Too much salt in a soup? Add potatoes. Potatoes soak up salt like mad. I swear. Whole roasted chicken will make two meals. Plus create stock. First will be roasted chicken. Second will be chicken soup. Finally. Boil bones to make stock. Don't be afraid of acid. 
like vinegars, citrus, pickled items, fermented things as well. Add more jarred olives to your recipes. They will expand flavors. Red wine is required for the best beef dishes. Not a chef. But, if your dish feels like it's missing something and you've already added salt, spices, and some kind of fat, try adding an acid like fruit juice, tomato, cooking wine, or vinegar. That's often the missing flavor that can turn a bland food into a winner. A long time ago a chef friend told me if there's one word to recommend to everyone, it's fresh. Use fresh everything where you can. Makes all the difference. Watch your cooking temperature. You don't need everything blazing hot. In fact, with high heat you'll usually end up burning drying out your meal. Medium heat is your friend. It gives you more time to get it right. A simple example is a good grilled cheese sandwich. If you make it in a skillet on medium heat, it might take a while, but you'll have enough time to make sure the toast is perfectly crispy without getting burned. One of the best simple tools to use when preparing food is a big duck off chopping board. Plenty of space. Plenty of room. It's just so. Moi. Not a chef, but from a family of people who should be. Know your oven, where the hot spots and cold spots are. Also, for a glass loaf pan, drop the temperature by 25F approximately for C. That boxed cake or brownie mix, if it calls for eggs, increase by 1 x if it calls for one egg add two if it calls for oil use melted butter instead in the same amount butter not margarine or substitute if it calls for water use milk you'll end up with a better baked dish don't smoke it messes with your taste buds and you tend to end up with extremely salty over seasoned food on that note in general maintain good dental hygiene learn how to hold a knife and cut correctly use acid it's your friend, lemon juice, vinegar, microplane zest, whatever, it brightens up everything. Season every step of the way and taste as you go. Don't overdo it, obviously, but you want to season every layer and taste. Keep in mind that acid will then also amplify things like salt. Keep everything in balance. Someone else said it, but it's true. It's easier to add than to take away. And if you're making something like soup or stock or sauce, if it's something that will reduce down season likely as you make it, and then when it's finished season at the end to get it where you want it. If you haven't noticed, a lot of mine are about seasoning. The vast majority of home cooks, and even some restaurant dishes, are under seasoned. Sometimes all you need are salt and pepper, but most people don't use enough. Salt especially, it shouldn't taste salty, but just shy of it. Whoa, you made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price.